Hi guys. As you can see, I'm behind the spinning wheel again. I figured that maybe, you know, watching this, uh, watching me do this uh, would be um, relaxing for some people out there to watch, maybe. I don't know. Um, I just thought I have so many things going on at the same time at the moment. I just felt like I need to do a bit of a check-in and talk to you guys about what's been going on and make it a bit more personal and, you know, more personal than the last two uh, or more vlogs that you've seen from me in the sense that what I was doing with, uh, you know, family photographs and all that, of course, that's very much in the distant past, most of it. So that's comfortable, right? That's easy. And um, a lot of things in life are less easy. So what I keep coming back to is that we have a square in the skies between Mars and Aries and Saturn in Capricorn, both of them are in their own signs, and it is just uh, very intense and just very, um, it tends to get um, a bit feisty, so to speak, and um, antagonistic. I spent a day and a half just feeling so angry and upset with everything and with myself, and I know part of that is PMS and is just cortisone in my blood and in my bloodstream and um, so yeah nothing I did make the, made the slightest impact on that I meditated uh, in all possible ways and manners and it helped for a little while and then a while later I was shouting again so not necessarily shouting but shouting inside anyway so I suppose it was just a bit much really you know, most things in our own uh, circumstances, this household, my husband and I, we are doing fine. We are healthy. We are standing on our own two feet, basically. We are, um, you know, cheerful, busy with things. Uh, it's, um, it's cool, you know. But, of course, we have gone through quite a bit of... Um, yeah. Yeah, done the mileage, done a lot of uh, processing, thinking, finding out about emotions, finding out about the way things have impacted us. Things that didn't even, uh, you know, compute before have uh, started to make a lot more sense. So, last Saturday, no, not Saturday, Sunday, the 27th, we celebrated, we went to a nice restaurant and because we have been together as a couple for 32 years. Uh, it's not bad. Each year we celebrate both our wedding anniversary and this date. The wedding anniversary is in September, the end of September. And this is really our, um, yeah, other occasion <laughs> in the year. That we just uh, love to uh, get together, go somewhere nice to eat, and uh, doesn't have to be expensive. Can be a pancake or a pizza or anything, and just uh, generally, you know, hang out and talk. And uh... so, what I find striking in those circumstances or those moments is that I am still very often tired, and both of us, we are just basically hanging together, uh, hanging in there by sheer uh, power of will, <laughs> so much of the time, time powering through, you know, that it is hard to really enjoy yourself in those type of moments when you should be enjoying yourself, but it's, uh, and it's not that you don't enjoy yourself, it's just that a, a lot of the time, he, it doesn't really anyway it's winter it's the end of January and this is what happens things are just uh, a bit tough so the next day after that I mean we were otherwise completely content and happy with our evening the next day 
I came into contact again with somebody I have worked with closely um, that I think of personally now, especially as a rather close friend, really, um, for the first time in, I don't know, four or five years. And I had kind of given up on getting back into touch with this guy because he um, was involved in all sorts of other activities and he doesn't live close by and I didn't have the opportunity to go and drive around or visit or any of it. And then there were also all sorts of intuitively felt, um, you know, unexplained reasons that now that I've talked to him again, it all figures. It all makes perfect sense. But, um, oh my goodness, doesn't just, it seems like everybody that I know has got to go through these turmoils and these, and quite often what his problem tends to be, as far as I've, um, you know, gathered from what he's been telling me, is that the people that he is involved with closely, the people he sees, the people he talks to, the people he's used to, and that are kind of used to him in a way, um, they don't really get who he is. So he goes on about his friends abandoning him. He's had a rather bad car accident in 2018. Actually, physically he's fine but it's been such a shock and he was in the middle of a like a completion process type of uh, you know a couple of months of being deeply engaged with therapeutic work for himself and then this happened so it's been such a trauma and so that's one other thing that I really want to talk about you know at some point hopefully in this vlog um, I just want to say that he was telling me, and of course I was listening because I care about this guy, and he's like, I suppose he's like a brother I never had in some way. And astrologically, there's a couple of things. Of course, I had to look up his chart. Can't get away from that. And there's a couple of things that, that really sort of link us together. So that makes sense. I tend to feel slightly uncomfortable because of growing up without a father and being very wary of men in general and yeah so I suppose I can be his older sister that's fine <laughs> so that makes that clear okay and because I don't want any other complicated involvements oh no please god please let's it all let's just have it all above the table and clear and um and simple preferably so, um, especially seeing as this guy's very good at making quite enough excitement for himself in his own life. And, um, what's that? With the moon in Gemini? <laughs> moon in Aries, moi, is uh, not easy. But uh, the more time passes, the more I look at those things. Uh, each time I go like, oh, that's terrible. Let's just, I mean, it's not terrible in a, like I... I am judging a person or him for having that lunar position, duh. It's just that it's tough and it's also tough to communicate with, even though there should be some kind of a sextile between his, you know, and, um, a 60 degree angle between his moon and mine. And so it should be fine. Okay. And it's not that I don't understand him. So that's what the aspect is about probably, but it's just that the way he has to go through things. Oh my God. And so his mates and people he calls his friends are really people that he's known for most of his life. And they just, uh, they're, you know, conservative and uh, bourgeois type. I don't know. People who have probably got the best intentions in the world, but they don't understand what he's on about. And they especially don't understand that what he's been through all his life is simply too much and too complicated for him not to talk about. He has to talk about this stuff. So I'm the right place for him to do that. However, um, we talked for an hour and a half. That was fine. 
And after that, I had a set of reactions. And that's what's lasted uh, for, I don't know, 36 hours or maybe a bit more. I went into town yesterday, so that's the day after the discussion or the conversation, to give myself a bit of fresh air and a bit of exercise and have, uh, you know, a bit of a shop. And um, turns out it didn't really go that well shopping because I just, I suppose I spent too much time in the coffee house and uh, then my husband called me while I was in the middle of a conversation with a uh, gemstone uh, minerals shop uh, owner that I sometimes talk to and I hadn't seen him for quite a while either so um, I don't know I bought myself a nice um, smoky quartz there it is in order to be as grounded as possible that helped a bit and I suppose it all helped I just was still feeling so upset and basically what I want to uh, sort of point out here or make available to you guys uh, I'm digging for more wool right here because you know carded stuff to put into my yarn um, there's empathy and there's compassion and those are really both of them are um, to many people, to most of us, those concepts are like bread and butter. They are so important in our lives that we um, we should really we try to pay attention to the to those parts of us that work in that respect um, as much as possible. And sometimes we don't get enough time, or we don't make enough time for that. Everybody's exhausted. You know, it's uh, been a VAT month at the husband's office, so uh, everybody's just, you know, with their heads on the floor, basically. And we badly need a day or two off and, you know, just chilling and relaxing and having a nice cup of coffee and uh, watch a movie and do, some, do something normal and ordinary again. The pressure has to go now. It's over with the pressure. So... And the, the needs for compassion and empathy are still there. Whether you're overworked or burnt out or whether you have trauma or any of it. It's just the, the mill keeps grinding. Just like this spinning wheel contraption I'm using here. It just keeps grinding, it keeps turning and it never ends and it never stops. So what I was kind of trying to think about... And what I'm actually sort of going to think out loud about here is the difference between compassion and empathy as I define them. It's just a model, you know, it's just a suggestion that you may find useful or applicable at some point. And um, if not, let me know. I mean, I'd love to hear from you, of course. Um, which reminds me that I just posted my link to my YouTube channel on my Facebook feed. <laughs> so if you're there, if you're here because of that, hi and welcome. <laughs> How good to have people. Um, so the way I see it, and it's b partly because I am, I have been formed also in Europe, growing up in Europe, with different languages. Um, partly and also learning Latin and stuff like that. This is just my sort of tentative at attempt at some background information. How I see it is that we have empathy, which is sort of in involuntary. Empathy happens, okay? It's like a, a strong, sometimes uh, it may be strong, but it is not necessarily registering as such field of resonance with emotion that comes from another person that's what I call empathy me okay so um, it's like um, you can want to have a boundary with the pe people or with a particular person or with maybe some sets of different people but you don't necessarily actually have that boundary. And a lot of time is spent 
creating a boundary. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's the it's the straw and the grass is in the in the wool. I have to fill get them out most of the time. Um, because a lot of the a lot of the stuff that seems to be happening um, is involuntary. It kind of registers somewhere in our systems, often on a physical level. It triggers some type of pattern. It reminds us very strongly of something that used to happen to us or that did happen to us in the past, which is actually, again, a different story because then... Uh, you call it a trigger, right? Somebody can be... And normally, if somebody's expressing a sincere emotion about something, why should that be a trigger? But it is, often, because it is processed. In the case of my friend here, I know for a fact that the way he expresses himself... Um, is felt by a lot of people as dominant. So when I also know for a fact that he never intends to be dominant at all. he It's just not on his mind. It's not on his agenda. He's not interested in mastering or directing or managing other people and having them dot, 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 whatever, you know? It's not, it's not on his mind. It's furthest from his mind. So a lot of that has to do with the empathy aspect of us. Maybe that's how I should put this. Okay? That's the way I look at it. I see an involuntary part of the story. And then I see the voluntary, the thing that I want, which I call compassion. So... I think it's crucial. It's compassion is what I am um, striving for. It is what I uh, put strategies uh, in place for. It is what I try to balance, to work out both for other people and for myself as much as possible. The whole inner lodge meditation type thing is an exercise in compassion for myself in this particular case. So, um, self-love, you know, in a good way. Get the concentration, get the focus right for me to find out about parts of myself. And I've been applying that technique to this situation yesterday morning, I think. Um, but I was just so tired also, and, uh, hormones and everything. So it was really not so easy. But the truth tends to come out and I tend to find it helpful. Even if after, you know, if I say it doesn't solve my problem instantly. Yeah, no, of course it doesn't. <laughs> I'm so silly in some things. Um, some things, all things, we're all silly. Um, because what I was, through the channels of empathy, picking up from my friend's um, long-winded, fairly high-strung uh, dramatization of what he had experienced in his, uh, in his car accident and also before and after that, sometime, some things that he talk, told me about. What I picked up was his, uh, directly, his, um, his anger and at feeling misunderstood, at feeling neglected and um, nobody really, you know, vibing with what he was going through and all that. In combination with the actual, I could say, physical trauma of the car accident, the you know, shock and uh, it's like a, a physical shock. That's trauma, right? And it's he described how uh, 
um, you know, he was sort of pushed off the road by another car, somebody in another car, and it happened at high speeds, and um, he managed to, you know, survive with only a few scratches, and um, he was crying in the phone, uh, describing how he looked back, he got him out of the car, and he looked back on the road, and he saw that all so, a lot of his stuff, his personal belongings, was strewn out all over the highway and the way I hope I'm not communicating this event to you now <laughs> because uh, let's not do that let's not perpetuate the um, the energy the vibration of that because maybe it won't because I've already processed or helped process uh, part of this anyway maybe you can help also by just listening to this. Um, the shock works for me as a trigger towards fragmentation. And when I fragment, I get angry and afraid and I go on fragmenting. And that drives me nuts. Well-known pattern. In a nutshell, okay? I'll just have to get this thing going again. Um, so that was very intense while I was listening to him while I was you know trying to have him you know tell tell it like it is while I was also afterwards telling him that I'm quite proud of him that he stopped smoking afterwards he stopped smoking weed he just gave up all the extraneous um, you know helping so-called helping tools to help him relax and all that because he wants to face his story and his problems alone and unaided because he wants to know that when he's overcome it he's actually overcome it and he wants to learn so i said that i was really proud of him and really impressed with that he actually you know gave up smoking also and um, she is because i know how hard that is and i know that and he was crying because it was sort of the first time that somebody he, he's got a connection with, whatever type, said that to him. That they were proud, that, they were, that, he was, that it was cool what he was doing. So all that, I just felt so sorry for the guy. All that kept me very busy during the conversation. And afterwards, I was sort of, you know, how you... <laughs> At least that's what I do. I regurgitate more or less the whole uh, of the interaction to my husband once by the time he got home, which was like 10 o'clock in the evening. So <laughs> poor him. <laughs> he had to listen to all that. And I never really, really uh, sort of felt, I felt uncomfortable by that time. By 10 o'clock in the evening, the whole discussion took place in the afternoon between two and four say and by 10 o'clock in the evening I all I had was a sense of discomfort and I know actually by now I do know that when I feel that type of sense of discomfort it is about fragmentation I have had a knock on the head sort of so to speak emotionally through Empathy, really, so not compassion, empathy, has made me fall back into a triggered situation so bad because of the, you know, completely uncontrollable situation and the traffic and what he was describing in his, in his, um, in his, uh, you know, his story. Um... This, the sense of, you know, being totally out of control, totally helpless, it's, uh, it's just the, massivest, the most massive trigger in the world. And uh, it's quite hard to, for everybody, this type of thing is really hard to deal with. And so, all in all, I still think this is quite interesting uh, to talk about because this is the kind of thing that happens. You have the desire for... Um, showing compassion to this guy okay he needs me he wanted me to be there I had had a dream that morning that I saw him among a hundred other people 
walking around somewhere with a tiny little girl infant on his arm. And so I felt like, hey, this is and that type of thing. Nowadays, it happens to me a bit more often that I actually get an intuitive dream that I can work with, which is extremely cool. Oh my God, yes. Um, so I uh, dug up the Facebook page that he doesn't use again and sent him a message um, with, uh, you know, the general idea of uh, who knows, you know, something may come up and maybe he'll react, uh, respond to me or maybe he won't and whatever. So I told him first thing, I told him about that and he tends to be slightly literal minded, this guy. So he went like, oh no, I please don't let, let, don't let my girlfriend be pregnant because she's 22 and she's way too young and she's still studying and all that. So I said, no, please, <laughs> it's not about that. So, But it's the type of thing that he likes to, because he's like this very interesting type of person who is like totally new age, indigo, new age, um, light worker type, uh, angel worker, what have you. And he's a truck driver. He was a truck driver for years of his life. And he's, I don't know, 40 by now, 40 plus, 40 ish. And uh, he doesn't do the trucks anymore because um, he's got a bad back and he's trying to find several other things. And so yeah, work wise. But so he's, he's got this very interesting combo of um, being totally intuitive. I remember one time he, him and his wife then um, did a, completely unfathomable little ritual for me for me personally and he managed to sort of make contact with my mother's spirit and manifest her energy into a large white candle that he gave to me afterwards it was extraordinary I was bawling my eyes out because I could really feel her and I'd never experienced anything like that. And it was just amazing. It was amazing. And he just did that, you know, just like that in, in five minutes. And it was like, and I went, I went like, nobody. And that's still quite, you know, scary to me in conversations with him. Is that he's always seen me as a real person. And there's many people who have done that. When in fact, I don't think that I was actually very much... A fully functioning human being in those days it's different now now I can actually give something back so that's the compassion part of my story getting back to that um, I had the chariot today as my card for the day yes I am still working with the Halloween tarot because I love it and it's such a nice simple little compact uh, deck and it's on my table and it's right there and it gives me everything I want and it's not so comp I don't know not so not so involved or not so it's got a bit more of a sense of humor than the Mary L that I've worked with for I suppose almost a year now I've worked uh, with the Mary L cards uh, quite a lot and uh, I still enjoy them hugely and whenever I have a you know, rather larger question or bigger issue that I need to figure out for myself. And I will always turn to the Mariel, I think. But um, recently the Halloween Tarot has been doing it for me. So um, I see the Chariot card very much as a, a signal for taking charge of your emotional life. And I suppose that's what I'm sort of trying to get at here with my whole length tale is the um, I have to I have to know when and where inside me the vibrations are compassionate vibrations and um, potentially after bridging uh, maybe a darker gap towards the unconscious, unconscious, subconscious, what have you, uh, where we land in empathy territory and where, of course, then it is much harder for me to control what goes on. 
and I had to find out through this process in those um, 36 plus hours that too much empathy which I cannot control in this case especially but it happens more often and it tends to happen with some people more often now that I think about it too much leads to fragmentation again and then I go nuts because I hate feeling fragmented and especially when there's a combination of things going on that has me on edge because I am afraid or because of whatever you know and um, all that it is linked but it is different because I suppose basically a lot of it is less conscious it's less aware compassion yes empathy hmm depends on the moment depends on what I can afford at that time and then again he was worth it he's worth it he's worth every he's worth all of it my husband also is worth all of it you are worth all of it I am worth all of it but it tends to get hairy and if it gets hairy it gets fragmented and I gosh I just have to deal with that and the moment yesterday evening I was bawling my eyes out in the bathtub because it was cold and the house was cold and everything and it's winter and it sucks basically today should be a bit more snow which tends to be slightly more comfortable I was bawling I was crying because I figured it out that this fragmentation thing has to do with me being angry and defensive trying desperately to no I'm not even trying to hang on to a semblance of order or cohesion I am just enraged at having lost all cohesion so um because I you know I've been there I was that person and there is no agency in that situation it is the totally 3d technical or nine of swords going on so i um you know it's unpleasant it's and because i have no agency anything can happen anything can f fall on top of me or fall out of me and <laughs> i was so upset but then once i realized that the issue was fragmentation again and I had cried a bit and I was, you know, I'd washed my hair and stuff. I was washing my hair and I went like, okay, I'm not having any more of this. This is where the anger stops. There, I, there's no physical danger at this moment. I am safe. I'm in my house. The heater is on. The husband is home. We are completely safe. And here I was in my bath going in circles, you know, like that. So... I have to pull myself away from the fragmentation. And I didn't do anything really other than just go in my inside my own head. I went, it's enough. Wash the hair. Okay? Wash the hair. Get out of the bath. Uh, dry off all the rest, the rest of it. Toothbrush. You know, the whole circus. Get into pajamas. Read a bit. Chill. Will you? So that's what I did to myself it was just no lyrics involved no text no no comments nothing it was just a choice I made and because I chose against the fragmentation that's it it just I sort of reformed <laughs> I suppose around the the core which is always there it's a matter of perception really there isn't really I am not really broken anymore it's a pattern that keeps repeating itself. So, um, after that I was fine. I slept. I took uh, a paracetamol and the magnesium and type stuff that I do. Because my muscles are aching. And it's winter and all that. And I slept like a baby. And this morning I was kind of okay again. I just keep... I just wanted to do this vlog especially. I wanted to tell you this whole tale. 
and I want it to spin and I suppose by now I am ready to also go have lunch and so on and so forth. So there will be there will be a fried egg in there soon. And I'm happy and comfortable again within myself. Even though slightly fuzzy and you know, all the rest of the PMS is all still there. <laughs> but I'm not miserable anymore. So I just wanted to describe that for you guys. And uh, I am not going to bore you with uh, all the astrological details. Uh, there are a couple of interesting bits there. Also, maybe one astrological detail. Just, you know, to close off. And um, he's got the exact same Mercury position that I have. So that might, might be why the empathy field between us tends to be even stronger because we tend to interpret things in somehow in the same way even though the rest of our priorities and our suns and moons and all the rest of it is completely different there's there's more there's more i have one other element that i share with him and that is jupiter conjunct the black moon this time in cancer I also have Jupiter and Cancer, more or less the same degree, is it? I don't know. Probably not at the same degree. Um, I haven't looked that up really. And many people, including my own parents, that I have um, strong, intense relationships with, have got um, a, a, a black moon, the lunar apogee, the furthest part of the lunar orbit, of the moon orbit, okay? in Cancer. Maybe uh, most of them also conjuncting a planet, a larger planet. So it's interesting, you know, there's a resonance there and both the Jupiter and the Mercury thing contribute to the em emp empathy, uh, bleh, bleh, sorry guys, to the empathy field that is going on uh, between us. And I know I've told you, told you before, the black moon, the lunar apogee, this is a, it's a tough challenge. And she's got to do with the subconscious. The, the furthest per point, furthest P, for the, I have to stop this. <laughs> the furthest point of the lunar orbit in your chart, in your relationships, in your day-to-day -day life, has to do with emotions in the subconscious, with levels of emotion that we would not otherwise have and if we manage to work with them if we manage to use our charts duh to break open these codes in relationships you can see so much more of how we are vulnerable to each other and um, what that does so maybe i can get back to the whole jupiter thing or i was going to i suppose uh, do a thing about um, planets in that position, planets on the uh, furthest point, and see what they do. But maybe I'll have to think about that a bit more. So, um, on that note, you guys, it's time for the fried egg. Thank you ever so much for um, sticking around, and um, I'll be talking to you again soon. Bye bye for now. <laughs>